Welcome to the Wandcast, the chapter by chapter reread of the Harry Potter series with a with a festive craft brew on the side. Ooh. With a festive oh. craft on the side, and I'm so happy on this festive occasion to be here with my two favorite Hufflepuffs, Jade and Nate. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you guys doing? Fine. <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm okay. not sure what's happening on the other side of the table. Are I wasn't you okay? Follow up questions. This is, uh, this I want to assure everybody: Jade is is here on her own free will. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I know something that might help you. And what's going to happen here is in this episode, we're going to be feasting our way into Chapter Eleven of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. The firebolt. I'm always in if there's food. Yeah. Like a lot I, of food. In fact, I believe there I was told there was gonna be pie and punch here. In the chapter, yep. Okay. Well, this is I I'm gonna <laughs> more pie in the other thing he said for us then. In the chapter. <laughs> not, I want to clarify, not here in mm. person. Damn. Okay. Mm. Well, I think it's about time we attempt to make our way to this feast, okay? And the nice part about doing that is Harry's return trip takes a very short amount of time, it would seem, because he is sprinting, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't, I, you look like you had something to say for a second. I, I was like, oh. Okay, so here's, here's the thing. Joe Rowe just didn't want to fucking write this, right? That's what happened. She mm-hmm. was just like, okay, and yep. then Harry left and used <clears throat> the trip. secret passage, and that, that's... He yeah. couldn't remember his way back. I feel like yeah. this <laughs> could have been a chapter all on its own. The now return trip. We get into where Harry's head's at yeah. here in yeah. the chapter, and so it does come up, but I also feel like this walk back could have been a chapter of Harry thinking, feeling, deciding things, and like... Having yeah. a confrontation with the Honeyduke's owners when he tries to get yeah. back into their cellar. <laughs> Fuck you. I've had a bad day, okay? <laughs> Do you know what it's like to overhear a conversation about stuff you were not expecting to talk about today? Yeah. That is extremely personal. <laughs> yeah, and apparently everyone knows. But, you know, none of that's important. So Well, there, just... is, there is curfew, Nate. I mean, you got to get back before curfew. <sighs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. He had to hurry. Yeah. He, we do get some of Harry's thoughts. He is trying to figure out why did no one that knows him tell him that his parents died because of a friendship betrayal? Yeah. Like, that is like, hey, your parents died. You just found out two years ago that it was not a car crash. Mm-hmm. You found out you're a part of this whole magical world. It's not that far off to be like, and by the way, your parents' best friend betrayed them. That is part of the reason why your parents died. I was going to say, that doesn't feel like a detail. That feels like big old main point. Like, hey, Voldemort killed your parents, right? We're telling you that much of it. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck leave the other literal half of the story out? Voldemort killed your parents because their <laughs> best friend betrayed them. Yeah. By the way, that dude's still alive and in prison, and Voldemort is smoke in some form, but he like he's coming. First it's, book, you know. So <laughs> it's also like a a weirdly known but not known secret. Like everybody knows, but also yeah. nobody in the public knows. And it's uh, what <laughs> feels weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, somehow the the ministry is one of the only groups of people that knows, but then the minister for magic. Is just telling a bar owner about it in public. Yeah. Which, granted, <laughs> I feel I feel like Madame Rose Murter is probably a person who knows what is shareable and what is not when she is told stuff in her bar. But also, that's like the president walking down to Buffalo Wild Wings <laughs> <laughs> and talking to the bartender about national secrets. Almost, you know, them rockets we got and are pretty cool, and they weren't whispering. <laughs> Harry was able to hear this at oh, the ta- yeah. table next, so everybody else in the bar well, heard. Yeah, and Hagrid's at the table, so yeah. everyone heard. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. That's fucking absurd. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a very weird thing, okay? But once he gets back, they don't have time right away to get into this whole conversation. They, they go to dinner uh, because, you know, their whole trip was cut short. They didn't get any, weren't able to get any food while they were in Hogsmeade. But Percy decides to sit down right next to him. So cannot discuss this at dinner. They have to wait till afterwards. But Harry 
leaves dinner a bit early to head back to the dorms ahead of Ron and Hermione. Yeah, you know Percy is aloof and kind of thinking and doing his own thing, right? They can't discuss it in front of him, but there's still that awkwardness because there's obviously an elephant sitting on the table in between you and none of you can talk about it. And Percy is just like totally oblivious to any of that. Well, you probably don't feel much like eating. I would probably just grab like a roll and a hunk of meat and be like, peace out, Holmes. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I've had a long day being <laughs> here and totally not in town and super bored. So I'm going to go ahead and go sleep more, I guess. <laughs> it, it, actually, it actually does say in the book that he watched everyone else at dinner. It yeah. doesn't say he ate. So I think you're on to yeah. something there. We know Hogwarts dinners are really good, though, too. So, like, grab a roll. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Bring something back yeah. for later. Get a little butter. That food is pretty good, though. <laughs> like, maybe That's maybe a... you do need to get some food because it'll help you feel better. Yeah. That is a smoked turkey breast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, like, I'm sad, but... <laughs> You that's, saying that's delicious. Looking at that rack of ribs is making you sadder now. <laughs> I don't think it is. I, you can eat ribs and be sad. That's, oh, yeah. That's that's allowed. It's messy finger food. You're oh, going to need to clean up afterwards anyways. Arguably, it's the best thing to eat. Just cry <laughs> into the, get a little salt <laughs> and then <laughs> clean your face and hands after and you'll be better. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. A lot of things make a lot more sense about you now. <laughs> now, I will say, Harry's sad boy eating at the at, at dinner probably would raise more red flags oh. for everybody around him. Be yeah. Like, what happened today? I thought you were just here. Yeah. No, let me clarify. This is not something you do in public. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is when you're alone and, and not being judged by anyone. And here's the other thing. I didn't. This was not specifically called out in the book, but. Everyone is now back from their first ever Hogsmeade trip. Mm -hmm. or un unless they're saying Harry got back before second. Ron and Hermione. This is the second trip. Harry's the, first. Well, Harry's first trip. Yes, that's what right. I meant. It's Harry's yeah. first trip. Yo, what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Harry, Harry never went to town. Fuck. <laughs> you guys. This is Harry's first alleged trip <laughs> to Hogsmeade. <laughs> So we're all going to tell you about our Hogsmeade trip. Right. We're the happiest we've ever been. Yeah. Meanwhile, Harry is sad boy eating a rack of ribs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a ridiculously hilarious scenario. Yeah. And I wish that was in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's so good. <laughs> Harry, you wouldn't believe how many jokes were in the joke shop. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I heard. <laughs> these ribs are good, though, guys. Yeah, I, I, oh, we're going to remake these films at some point, right? On our own. Okay. Anyway, Harry gets out of dinner before uh, everyone else heads back to the dorm and he pulls out the photo album that Hagrid gave him at the end of first year. And he found a wedding picture in there from his parents' wedding day and found a young, handsome and full of laughter looking serious black yeah his eyes aren't all sunken and he doesn't look all crazy and scary like he did in the photos he's seen of him in like azkaban yeah you know he looks like a a regular dude i was gonna say all of this kind of the we were talking about how it's a little weird and some people aren't mentioning things to others but then they're being pretty open about it to other people it feels kind of like when Jade and I were more involved with the Legion Riders, right? There was a, a group of guys who had been involved in that club for a long time, and they had this little inside joke where on the inside of their vests, they had a patch that said Second Division. And it didn't mean anything. It was just all the old guys acknowledging, hey, we're, we're the old group. We're the, the original generation, kind of. And so they would have inside jokes about shit that happened 10, 15 years ago that we weren't around for. And they would talk openly amongst themselves. But then when the younger crew was there, like we didn't get a lot of those stories because they were making new memories with us, you know? And so it kind of feels like these are the older generation. Shit went down back in the day. Everybody's got history and feelings about that. And we don't need to just divulge that to just anybody. but. The old barkeep, yeah, he was there 15 years ago. I'm going to talk to him about it. Painful memories that you don't want to bring up unless yeah. it's somebody who's involved. 
Well, yeah, and because I mean, Madame Rose Murder does say she loved the two of them. You know, right. J- James and Sirius. They were, you know, they always made her laugh. They were there, the, you know, they were constantly, uh, they were a bright spot of her life. I'm sure, you know, for her to say that means something. Like she right. sees all the Hogwarts Hogwarts students, and these two stuck out 13 years later. That's how good of a people they are. So it's like, yeah, it's a mean thing about one, but it's a sad and a, and a shared good therapy moment for the other, for James. 100%. Yeah. And now, you know, Harry's looking at this photo and he sees Sirius in it and that these are times past when everybody was happy. Yeah. yeah. And he's wondering, fuck, was he planning on doing that in this photo? Yeah. Or was this really just before when things are good and they're friends and it's... Man, it's going to make you ask a lot of questions. It's it's one of those moments, like when you find out the neighbor has bodies in his basement <laughs> and yeah. you're, you know, you look back at your like ta- your street barbecue or what yeah. your block yeah. party and you were like, look at him playing with the kids. Look at that picture. Look at yeah. him like, you know, with his arm around Bill. Yeah, he played. Look- he always plays catch with my son. Yeah. Was like, he doing yeah. it? Like, was he thinking about murdering us in yeah. that moment? Or yeah, what? great dude. Yeah. Yeah. Great dude. Yeah. Apparently not, though. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, turns out a couple bodies. Not a great look. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Harry wonders, you know, because yeah, like this full of laughter individual. Like, is that just how mad and how evil he is that even then he was like, going to kill these two? Yeah. I'm well, going to make sure these two die. I would think that your natural... Next, I mean, again, 13 year old. Okay. Try yeah. To keep this in, yeah. in scope. But I think your natural next question would be why was my family involved at all? Like, what, yeah. what was the pull? I get Voldemort wanting to take over the world or whatever. Why were we instrumental in that? Yeah. Yeah. So why would Sirius have turned to the other side? What was the gain there? What was yeah. killing my family going to achieve for anybody? But yeah. You know, we don't think about that right now. <laughs> questions on questions. There's yeah. like, Harry, if you get into as much shit as you do every year, these are things you should have thought about probably by now. Yeah. We're the Potters. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's enough reason for Voldemort to stop his whole fucking world domination operation just to come murder us. <gasps> but then somehow also huge tragedy that the Potter, like if, if that was somehow a step, seems like it wouldn't be that much of a tragedy because it'd be like, well, we knew it was coming. Yeah. Like, the, yeah, it was horrible, but. We all knew it had to happen. It's like, probably because of the Skelligro thing that we've learned recently <laughs> about Harry Potter. Voldemort knew he was going to need the Skelligro secret formula. To get his nose Well, no. To, no, no, no. To guys, get his nose. guys. Oh. Well, there are no bones in your nose. Cartilage. He doesn't know that. Right. That's, so the Skelligro that's knowledge. does not, can't help you get your nose back mm-hmm. once your nose is gone. He doesn't know that, though. No, but then, I don't know. He didn't have the nose when he killed uh, the Potters, or did he? Say he looks if there was like I no think, nose, still then, then yeah. it stands to reason he probably tried the Skelligro, didn't work, and that's why he wanted to kill the Potters because they're the heirs to that, that fortune. That was his one star review. That was had- oh my god. <laughs> I think he's described as starting to look weird. I don't think I don't know how yeah, intense I don't think it it's is full until reptilian. Later. Yeah, it is yeah. week three. <laughs> no growth yet. God, one star. <laughs> Avada Kedavra. Yeah, he's just mad. He's just mad about it, so he's murdering them. Like he fucking live streamed it. Oh man. Okay, yeah. Valdi's a Karen. I mean, it it tracks. Yeah, it does track. (laughs) Harry, on the other hand, doesn't appear to be on any tracks whatsoever. He doesn't even think of hardly any why at all. He's just sad. But he gets angry. Yeah, he's a sad, angry boy, which understandable. And he gets into his bed and he shuts all the the curtains and, uh, you know, because he wants to be alone, even from Ron. Like, Ron comes up and checks on him and he's just like, nope, curtain shut and sleeping. But uh, also not sleeping because super fucking pissed off right now. Yeah. I Everybody's had one of those times where you're like, look, I just need to I just need to feel some things and be alone for a little while. I do that weekly (laughs) i mean maybe for shorter bits i'm not like avoiding things for days but like you know i just i need to be and sit and consider (laughs) 
where I am in my situation. Yeah, I do it twice daily. It's called my commute. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'm grateful it's a 40-minute commute. The, yeah, I've got about 25 minutes, and it's <laughs> sometimes they're good. Sometimes it's a spiral. <laughs> By the time I get where I'm going, I've worked myself into a frenzy. <laughs> And then, oh, hello, Jade. That's normally the ride in the morning. <laughs> the ride from work to home oh, is okay. always better, you uh, know. Yeah, the hello, Todd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good morning. We're really going to do this for another 10 hours again after we did it yesterday. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Harry, absolutely, as he's laying here, is spiraling because 100%. He is picturing Black blasting Peter Pettigrew on the street. And Harry says that. Pettigrew resembles Neville. Why does Neville need to take strays right here? <laughs> Come because Harry. that's who Neville is as a person. Yeah. That he is, how... is like the equivalent of a human pin cushion. Well, like Peter Pettigrew he's just gonna catch him. was described to us in the last chapter, and it's not inaccurate to say it is Neville-like. I think that the reason that you're saying that, and the reason that Harry thinks this, is because the only other person that we hear the teachers talk about in that manner mm-hmm. is Neville. It, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, no, they don't shit on any other student, but while they were talking about fucking Peter Pettigrew, she yeah. was like... Kid never could duel. Yeah. McG <laughs> says, like, I was I was short with him. And then, like, you can see now how I regret that. And it's like, we get examples already at this point where McG's been short with Neville. Uh, all and, the teachers. And yeah. we're going to get examples in the future of when McG gets real short with Neville. So, like, yeah, like, it does make sense. But I also wonder if maybe there is something a little bit deeper to his thought process there. But... That is a conversation for much later, because Harry's dream continues, or his his thought process continues, and you know it's it's serious reporting back to Voldemort saying it's been done. I'm the secret keeper. Everything is working out for us fantastically. And that's the end of your thought process about why that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's Again, all we need to talk 13 about. Thirteen year old filled with hatred. Get it. But uh, now I'm looking at it like. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, it does. It does. So the, the book fades out because it, then it says that he hears the big shrill laughter from Voldemort and it kind of just fades out. So it could be interpreted as like, you can only spiral so much. You're going to fall asleep at some point, though. Yeah. And oh, it's yeah. just like, it's he, been a big day. He fell asleep thinking of Voldemort's laughter is kind of how it reads a little bit, which <laughs> is unfortunate. He's having a really bad time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Things are not great in Harry's head right now. He's got the steam building, you know? Three broomsticks. Overall, I can't say it was a great experience. The butterbeer was good, uh, but it occurred. My first visit also happened to be the only time I've ever been there. Going to have to give it one star. Radom Rose Murter was nice, though. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I thought you were going to say three and a half stars. <laughs> Filled with trauma. Wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> Wouldn't change a thing. Filled with trauma. Perfect visit. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can discuss this review a little bit more over a butterbeer like substance of our own. Ooh. Because I feel like drinking. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. I think we'll do that right now. And we'll be back right after this. Hey, Nate. What are we drinking today? Today, we are drinking wild tea blueberry. The can says, not the can, the screen says, (laughs) your taste buds are in for a flavor eruption with wild Ohio blueberry wild tea. That is a mouthful. We combined the flavor of juicy, succulent blueberries with small hints of lavender, and we instantly knew we had ourselves a winner at six and a half percent. Blueberry is a great year-round drink that's popular among wild Ohio fans. Being in Michigan, you know how we feel about Ohio (laughs) fans. But you can find our wild blueberry... Well, I'm sorry. Okay, like I said, mouthful. You can find our blueberry wild tea at select retailers. And it's Uh, gluten-free, vegan, and brewed with real tea. Which is fucking awesome. I don't think we've... Jade and I have been on a tea kick lately. A month ago, we had no tea, and now we have several boxes of tea. (laughs) It smells like wine, and it tastes like a very good fruity wine. (laughs) Like a very sweet wine, but it's a red wine. And despite the fact that this is from Ohio, I think... (laughs) 
I think I am going to give this nine college football national championship wins out of 10. Nine out of 10. I love this is good. Uh, I think it's not as blueberry as some other beers I've had, which is good because I think that sometimes it's too blueberry. I don't want to taste like a blueberry muffin or something. Oh, yeah. So it's like a light, subtle blueberry. So I like it, and I'm not going to say what you said. <laughs> um, I'm going to say eight blueberries. Out of eight ten. blueberries. Fantastic. Uh, I am I am right up there with you, Aaron. I'm going nine blueberries. Yeah, this is real good. This is a great fucking beer. And you know what? Maybe maybe I went a little hard on Ohio, <laughs> and maybe, look, I don't really give the, uh, that much shits about football. But if their beer game is like this, yeah, okay, Ohio, yeah. I see you. Maybe yeah, I, you're not so bad after all. I took a trip down to Cincinnati a little while ago and stopped at a couple of little small breweries there, and you got some good stuff going on down there, Ohio. You're mostly bad, but those few things you do have going for you. <laughs> when it's good, it's good, and good is wild tea blueberry. Fuck it's yeah, wild tea blueberry, and yeah, I'm very excited for the next one because we actually have a series of these that we're going to be reviewing. But Hell we don't yeah. we don't have time to talk about that right now because it's time to get back into the chapter, and I think we're going to do that right now. Get you out, and we are back. And Harry is awake after falling asleep at daybreak, which is <laughs> either very late or quite early. He's a teen. He can handle that. Yeah. It does say he woke up a few hours later and we find out it was roughly lunchtime. So maybe 11, 1130. But like, dude got like probably four hours sleep here. As a guy in my 30s, I can definitely do the sleeping till lunchtime thing, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I also go to bed at 8 p.m. the night before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jade and I were just talking about this the other day. I get roughly four and a half, five hours of sleep uh, pretty consistently. And I'm getting to the point where I'm like, I think my body's starting to rebel against me <laughs> because it's just like I can tell when I just don't have the energy anymore for the day. And Harry's, you know, he's 13. So he's just like, yeah, four hours of sleep. It'll affect him a little bit for maybe an hour or two, but he'll get back into his groove and be fine. Whereas us by like noon, I'm like, I need to fucking sleep like a whole 10 hours right now. This guy needs a nap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently it does affect Harry quite a bit because when he comes down to the common room, both Ron and Hermione tell him he looks like shit. Hey guys, maybe just have a little bit of tact as you prepare to do what you're about to do, knowing this Friend of yours heard what he heard last night. That's true. I was going to say, it's 50-50. Thank fuck you got friends that'll tell you. You yeah, know? Yeah. Because that's kind of a rarity. <laughs> I'm like, Jay, does this make my belly look big? And she's like, I love you just the way you are. You don't got to worry about that. But I also, mean, Jay yeah. will tell me. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like, a lot of people just straight won't do that. Yeah. But yeah. to your point, really? After everything I've learned and I'm going through, pass. I'm going back to bed. Yeah, I know. I feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, you guys are going to be surprised to hear this. Wasn't looking for confirmation. <laughs> yeah, so they insult this man as he comes down the stairs and then hold an intervention with him about, you know, going after Black. The main point of it is it's not worth it. This dude's a serial killer, but he's a serial killer who wants to kill you. So. Probably not a great idea. Also, how? How are you? Th th <laughs> yeah. th that was yeah. my whole thing. They're like, don't go after Black. I'm like, I mean, okay, I hear where you're going, and I know, like, I want to, but I, do I can't. Like, <laughs> like, what am I going to do? Go stand outside and go, hey, <laughs> here I am. Yeah. Like, okay, let's think this through as a teen. Harry, you're going to go after a serial killer. Great. It's like one of those old movies one who's from after the 60s. You even, okay? So you want to chase a serial killer. <laughs> Step one. Where is he? I don't fucking know. <laughs> this is not a good manual. You're, you're at Hogwarts and he's <laughs> could be anywhere else. So you gotta leave the school. I, I've got to get approval from a teacher, Dumbledore. Hey, I'm gonna go leave. Or not. Now he's got a secret way out of town. So now you're out of town. What the fuck are you going to do to stop a grown-ass man? Or to find the grown 
grown-ass Or to man. find the grown-ass... Like, immediately, the plan has nowhere to go. This is a child <laughs> who ran away from home with two sandwiches, <laughs> got five to ten minutes away, and started freaking the fuck out. Exactly. But now, months later, we are fully equipped to hunt down a serial killer. Now, look, again, he's 13. There's no fault in what I just said. I mean, again, Harry is the prize that the guy's looking for, right? So in his mind, it should be easy. He's been after you the whole t- Like, where are you going to dangle yourself? <laughs> so Plus, you know he's going to come get you. He's already been in Hogwarts, yeah. right? So my whole scenario of him having to leave and find him right out the window, he's already found you, fucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he doesn't even have to leave. He, what are you going to stand in the Great Hall and yeah. be like, I'm here. Yeah, how are you going to signal like, to him that you're... Yeah, you're, <laughs> without come get me. causing well, enough attention drawn to yourself to where someone's going to be like, Harry, knock the fuck off. He was <laughs> he was just going to hang out right outside the portrait hole. He was <laughs> just going to wait. He was just going to wait there. He was here before. Yeah, he'll, he'll come back. <laughs> yeah. Well, hang out here in a sleeping bag. Harry tries to explain why he's not really taking Ron and Hermione's ad- advice here. Seriously. And he tells them what he hears when the Dementors get near him. Yeah. Not a not a great experience to learn about. Not a great experience to go through. This is where 13-year-old becomes a much more understandable thought process. It's like, yeah, I heard my mom die. So I'm going to do whatever I can to stop the guy who killed my mom or who led to the death of my mom because I hear it all the time now. Yeah. They're like, yeah, not great. Yeah, no, I understand the thought process. It's yeah. just like, I mean, Ron, yeah, maybe it's more Ron and Hermione's reactions where they're like, don't go after it. Because it's like, there's nothing he can do. Like, he could he could yeah. have, he could want to. Yeah. But he's not really in any more danger than he was five seconds ago. I think that's the thing is this is Harry feeling enough emotion to be motivated to do something. Yeah. But there is nothing he can really do. Yeah. But that's what's causing the tension, like the steam in your chest when the anxiety is rising and you can't slow it down. It's because he wants to go and fucking murder somebody right now. But he's going to sit here and take a class about plants (laughs) and not do that. And it's really hard to keep that emotion from just always being at the surface. Yeah, because it's a vicious cycle. Yes. You get upset, (laughs) and then you get worried that you're upset, and that upsets you, and now you're upset, and then you get worried that you're upset. And yeah, what you said earlier, Jade, though, that is exactly what Hermione says to his face. She just straight up goes, there's nothing you can do. And I'm not saying this about you, but I'm saying this about how Hermione said it. Again, you're not wrong, Hermione. You are an asshole, though. Yeah. Don't it's just tell timing. Harry that to his face right now. Right. Well, I guess I guess that's my thing, is the way that they're handling it. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Yes, there is nothing he can do, but instead of badgering him and being yeah. like, there's nothing you can do, so don't try, yeah. there's nothing he can do to make that, so just support your friend. <laughs> yeah. 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 Be like, hey, man, yeah, you let us know what you need. Yeah. All they need to do is not encourage him. To go do the dumb thing that he wants to There's do. There's no dumb thing for him to do, though. Ex- exactly. I, well, exactly. But yeah. Harry feels like there is. But he still might try. <laughs> He's going to do. That's what I'm saying. He's being emotional. This is when people do dumb, crazy shit that yeah. makes no sense. Why did so and so jump off a bridge? Well, it's like, well. This is where we just find he out. He felt like doing something. This is where we find out Harry just took off into the Forbidden Forest because that's where dangerous things are. Right, exactly. He just charged the Whomping Willow for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. But it's like all they need to really do is just de-escalate those yes. ideas. They don't need to badger him. They don't need to tell. They damn sure don't need to tell Harry what he needs to do right now instead. Yeah. Because yeah. I person, I would never respond to that. If I'm in a traumatic, really emotional moment, I don't want your input. I just want to be. And okay, maybe I'm not going to go do the dumb thing, but don't help me escalate any sort of emotion right now. Just keep it nice and chill. Smoke this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the thing is, is that they come, the thing they come to is that he can't do anything except kill Black, right? That's that's the ultimate. Yeah, what are you, you going to do? Kill him? Kill He's him. like, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. and that you going to become happen. a murderer, Harry? Is that what we're talking about right now? And I guess the difference is is that they're talking about Harry going out and killing Black, which isn't a scenario that's going to happen. What's going to happen right. is Black's going to come after Harry, and Harry could kill him in self-defense. And honestly, as a friend, 
That's where we're I, okay. You know what, Harry? Fuck that guy. Absolutely. We're not going after him to go murder him because that's psychotic and absolutely not <laughs> something we can like feasibly do. But if that fucker comes after you, you don't really have a choice considering how many people he's killed. So yeah, fuck that guy. Let's set up some home alone type ideas to fucking shenanigans. Home yeah. alone. Harry, you can't do anything about black right now. Right. Let's sit down and come up with a plan. Let's put boo- let's booby trap this whole fucking yeah, castle. Yeah. How about that? Let's cu- let's come up with a plan. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Hermione says what I would argue uh, is the opposite of what you say should be happening. Instead of de-escalating, I think she escalates it. Oh yeah. She says your mom and dad wouldn't want you to go looking for black. And Harry responds, "Hey Hermione, I will never know what my parents want because they're oh. dead." Because of Sirius Black. Fucking ouch. Mm. Sweet Jesus, Hermione. Uh, You're 13. Just... She's 13. Look, we're talking about how Harry's not smart. You know who else is a smart? Hermione, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Like being a 13 year old. She is very Stop. intelligent, yeah. right? Maybe not wise. She's not emotionally intelligent. It, well, yeah. Okay. You, I Hermione, got you. are the person that just pats the back. Shut your mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you turn around, you look at Hermione, you go, oh, you think that my parents who would know, like, they were murdered by their best friend. If they had that knowledge and they knew that their old best friend was trying to murder their son, you think that they would be cool with that? They would just want me to sit down and take that like yeah. a little bitch? Is that what you think my parents would think I would, I, I should do? Okay. Okay, Hermione. No, we're not talking anymore Hermione tonight. Thank you. Hermione needs to be the friend that tells Harry what I just found out. That actually there is no such thing as a premeditated (laughs) self-defense. That is murder one. I'll have you know there is another fictional character that does believe that you can premeditate self-defense. I I believe we brought that up last year. I think so. I just feel like if somebody's attacking you over and over and uh, the authorities that are have proven themselves incapable of defending you, and you know that the person coming after you is intent on murdering you. Oh, yeah. We're and talking that's a good about point. him Actually, or me. Yeah. It's going to be him. And I'm, I'm fully and, behind and that. And significantly stronger. So if they get the drop on me, yeah. I'm fucked. Yeah, actually, this could. I think this is premeditated self defense. I'm just saying. It is. I if, would argue this all fucking day. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I know we got to move on. But, like, if he home alones it. Then 100% yes, premeditated self-defense, but they came into your space. But if Harry leaves to go find yes, Sirius yes, Black yes, and yes, puts yes, himself yes. In, a, in a situation absolutely. where then he needs to defend himself, yeah. Hundo P. that's murder. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. But hey, you know what we've come to, though? He's got options. <laughs> that's what, yeah. He can either try the home defense, which I would probably that's do saying, because friend, fucking Home Alone at Hogwarts. <laughs> I don't know why that's not a video game right now. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> As a friend, you pull out the parchment. You go, these are our options, Harry. <laughs> yeah. Well, Nate, it kind of feels like you're trying to change the subject, which is a good tactic in a conversation <laughs> because your homeboy Ron does the same thing and says, Harry, look, let's go talk to Hagrid. OK, we haven't seen him in a while. And Harry, unfortunately for Ron, quickly jumps on that. And he's like, actually, Ron, yeah, let's go talk to Hagrid. Because I have questions for him about the thing you're trying to get me to not talk about. Exactly. Well, and I mean, we really haven't. We've seen Hagrid in this book. We were with him like for they didn't really talk to him when he got to Hogwarts. But then they had the class with him. Yeah, he's a professor now. He's gotten the letter, but that wasn't like interaction with Hagrid. They really haven't hung out with him yet. And they do that like first thing every fucking year. So it's kind of weird that it's been this long and it hasn't been, I don't know, featured a little more. There hasn't been a lot of tea time. Normally we get a few tea times with Hagrid pretty early on. But when they get there, we see why. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, it turns out there it's might be really a reason sad. why Harry's not or Hagrid's not inviting uh, people for tea. Not being social. Because they do go down to Hagrid's. And yeah, he is crying. Oh. Uh, we find out that Buckbeak has a hearing with the Committee for the Disposal of Dangerous Creatures on April 20th. But look, uh. can you imagine as a 13-year-old, you go to Hagrid's hut, he opens the door sobbing. 
immediately I'm uncomfortable. Like, you know what, Hager, this was a bad idea. Why don't I come back later? Yeah, I, I know I definitely... you're my friend, but I'm also 13 and don't have the emotional intelligence of an adult yet. Especially because hey, Harry went down there all huffy and puffy, ready to... Mad at him. Yeah. Blow yeah. his down. Yeah. 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 It would and... only made sense if they had a couple Hufflepuffs with him, because then they could Hufflepuff and blow the house down. Something was done here. It's I don't I don't think let us know if it was okay. We're talking about murder. That's not a crime. What Nate just said, that was a fucking crime. I know I hear you. That is that is time people can't get back. I need a slight distraction. Okay. Buckbeak is inside in the corner munching on a very bloody carcass. Do you, would you like to guess what that means, Nate? That means that Buckbeak has been there the whole time. That's correct. That is a respectable amount of points for you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Let's just be real about the fact that he has a whole goddamn horse in his little <laughs> his little hut. Yeah, you know, that's a great point. Up until this point, and I know <laughs> I know it's gonna be tough for us because in the movies we are given a visual mm -hmm. of Hagrid's hut. And it is not a very big hut. <laughs> it's not. His hut is described as a one-room house in book one. So I think even in the book, this is kind of a small house. <laughs> and apparently, a horse has been munching on a bloody carcass in the corner, and that's not the first thing you noticed. <laughs> it's got to be big Doug enough Ratchet. to where they could walk in and not notice a horse, though. That, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> I, I, unless we're just saying Hagrid is so large that he takes up your entire field of vision. Oh, he was behind Hagrid. So he's behind Hagrid. But still. Yeah, that still, could be. He cracks the door and Hagrid's in front of it. No and matter then he what, opens it and then it's like, oh, shit. There's a fucking horse in this tiny hut. <laughs> Probably shitting in the head. Like this is a whole, <laughs> this is a whole situation. Okay. Plus, you got Fang in there. That's called a situation. Ah, uh, I'm just saying his hut's probably not much bigger than like where we're hanging out right now. Maybe a little bit. Imagine having a horse and a big ass dog and Hagrid. <laughs> plus, plus three thirteen year olds. Buckbeak is like. I don't like how you added that. I don't like how you added that. <laughs> That didn't feel good. Maybe Buckbeak is just like Drax, and he can just move so slowly <laughs> that you can't see he's there. It's T-Rex rules. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's invisible well, if he you is, don't move. It's all he movement is laying based. in the bed. So, you know, maybe he just wasn't noticed. I'm just saying that even if you did, like, despite the fact that that's kind of incredulous, that they didn't <laughs> notice him, right? Just... The idea that they're all hanging out in this very tiny hut. Yes, and absolutely. It's The air is heavy. That's all I'm saying. That's going to be a thick air. Absolutely. Well, what's not going to help is we're discussing the people that are in charge of this hearing. They are 100% allegedly. They're 100% allegedly You're in Lucius Malfoy's. You don't know. They can hear us. They're listening, <laughs> Jay. This, this committee is in Lucius Malfoy's pocket. Big Gringotts doesn't want you to know that, okay? <laughs> they don't want you to know that Lucius Malfoy has a lot more pull. He has a lot more pull. It's the goblins, than man. They're all in on it together. <laughs> okay, that's racist. Fucking gobos. Uh, no, hold on. We're not on the same... <laughs> hold, Jesus Christ, we are not on the same page. That's an endearing term. I just want everyone to know that. Holy... I love all goblins. No, okay. I mean... I think Hagrid broaching a topic like this yeah. means that it's legit because Hagrid does not talk like this. No, no. Hagrid's not a legal, political uh, right. pundit. Like, this man wants to talk about dangerous, magical creatures. Yeah. Not the committee. But the nice part is, in all this shitty situation, the first thing that happens, or sorry, it's not the first thing that happens, but Harry's mindset has completely shifted. He is not going to be down here trying to call out Hagrid when Hagrid's in this state. Harry is pissed, but he's also a good friend. And I appreciate that about Harry and Ron and Hermione in this situation. Like, they immediately are there for their friends. And they even offer to be witnesses uh, at the hearing and help research for, for Hagrid. It is a sweet moment, but mm -hmm. also, even if you tried to, like, accuse him right now, you ain't getting anywhere because he's just going to start sobbing even harder. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. He's such a big guy. You're going to drown in his fucking tears. Yeah, yeah, like, we're we're no. not getting answers. And it's, by the way, doors on the wall. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's partially nice, but also I think partially selfish. You aren't getting anything out of him at this point. Yeah. You might as well wait till he's calm. 
Sometimes it's more about the deed than the intent, Jake. Sometimes it is. It's a sad, but it's a nice, sweet little moment. And I, I just kind of want to collect myself a bit. So I, I think maybe we'll take a quick little break and we'll be back right after this. We are back. We are calm and collected and we're vibing. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Hagrid is not with us because he uh-huh. is quite down still. Yeah, He has been so worried about Buckbeak. He's been so worried about no one liking his classes. Oh, no, we love your class, buddy. Yeah, we were just coming down here to tell you that. I think Hagrid would be convinced by that. I think he would. (laughs) They did the right thing by being like, oh, no, 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 no. We love it. How are the flabber worms? They're (laughs) they're all dead. Oh, yeah, they did. Oh, cool. Or no, bad. Or, 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 or. Ah, oh, that's sad. <laughs> it oh. didn't seem like he cared very much. <laughs> it was just no, another no. thing added on everything else. He's like, oh, and the flobber worms are dead, and they're going to take Buckbeak. It's, you know, everybody's spiraling. <laughs> everybody's having a bad time. Love it's it. it's hard to get over flubber worms when Dementors are all along your uh, route to get to what used to be your happy place. Yeah. He has to go past the Dementors every time he wants to go to the Three Broomsticks. So it's like... I want to get happy. Now I'm depressed. Now I'm at the place that's supposed to make me happy, but then I have to go back past the depress- the depression. We talked about this earlier in this episode about how, you know, the, the morning commute to work is yeah. kind of like a downward, <laughs> but then your commute uh, back home is like an upward spiral. Yeah. Hagrid's got to walk past those dementors twice. Yeah, absolutely. I just figured out why Hagrid's so fucking sad because he's getting drunk and then having (laughs) these things sap and then he's just sad drunk at the end of the day and that's never a good place. Eating a rack of ribs? (laughs) Well, that always makes me happy. It feels like the teacher should be able to make some type of, you know, expecto patronum archway or some shit. Like Monopoly. Past the gates of Hogwarts. Here's $200. I think maybe the teachers do. Hagrid's going by himself, though. Like, I'm thinking when they are being escorted, when the students are being escorted to Hogsmeade, maybe that is what happens. Maybe they're protected, because then we, Hagrid doesn't get that benefit. We don't hear about the students talking about the Dementors affecting them that much to and from Hogwarts. Well, if I was Hagrid then, I'd, I'd become real <laughs> close with the teacher and be like, hey, guess who's coming with me? Yo, yo Mick G. Yeah. You want a drink? You're going to fucking escort me every Dude, night, man. You know Flitwick's up for a cocktail what, yeah. at just about any time of the day. Oh, man, yeah. that would be such a cool... He just opens the door to Flitwick's class, and he's like, you're a whiskey guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, pay- a, he's a rum punch kind of guy. Ooh. You, you pay some young 20-year-old delivery boy down from a hog's mead, like, uh, you know, a couple fucking nuts to help you get by every day. <laughs> Just take the nuts and give me the flask, boy. <laughs> can we? Can we refer? Not boy. He's twenty one. <laughs> he's delivering alcohol. First of all, can we he's stop? An adult saying, person we are talking about. Can we stop saying Hagrid's with young people? <laughs> he can is, we please though. refer to them as canuts? Canuts. Okay, canuts. I'm, that's my fault. I. But <laughs> he I'm is getting, consistently with young people. I'm getting upset. <laughs> Probably as much as Hagrid was when he was in Azkaban, because that is how he explains he is feeling like lately. It's a very similar thing. And he talks about how when he was there, it was there was no happy thoughts. It was always downward spiral. And even when he was released, you know, when he got noticed uh, that he was allowed to be free, he talks about how the Dementors didn't give a fuck. Yeah. They were just like. This is what we do, man. We don't really want to let you go, though. Hey, we're gonna give you an escort out of the building because we're gonna we're gonna try to suck a little bit more out of you. I think this has got to be because Hagrid is who Hagrid is. Hagrid has a really big heart, mm-hmm. big happy, energy. and so oh yeah, yeah, and Lot so to feed on. these dementors are like Hagrid is a perfectly cooked filet mignon or that wagyu stuff, right? <laughs> That's Hagrid. You get somebody like Black is weird, right? Because he's got some weird things with the Dementors. But Harry's weird too, because if you get a guy like Flitwick, he's a slider. He's a slider. He's a oh yes, (laughs) fucking perfect. (laughs) Flitwick is a slider, right? But Hagrid is like this huge piece 
to the Dementors, H- and so they're not going to want to just let that go. <laughs> Hagrid's a tomahawk steak. Hagrid's yeah. the rack of ribs. <laughs> Hagrid's the rack. There we go. We, we did it. We did it, everyone. We got there. <laughs> See, it's so interesting, though, because it feeds on your, on your happiness. Mm-hmm. They like Hagrid, right? But they're also super attracted to Harry because of his trauma. So it's like a weird, like they're attracted. Hagrid's got to be the same way because Hagrid having a big heart, and I'm going to say it, lovable, but kind of maybe a little more simple guy. <laughs> Easier to pull the happy out of. He, the, the bad things that have happened to Hagrid have had a dramatic effect on Hagrid because, you know, he's fucking Hagrid. So, you know, it's a little sad. It is super sad for Hagrid. And I think that's maybe why. They like Hagrid and they like Harry because Harry just feels super sad because he's had terrible shit happen to him. I believe what we referenced last episode is that Harry, or at one of our previous episodes, is that Harry is a pre-cooked microwavable meal. They can get to what they want right <laughs> really now. Fast. Hagrid yeah. is a tomahawk steak that they are going to smoke for 16 hours. Oh. And then when they finally get to it, it's going to be a little tough. But that is a delicious, fulfilling meal. But they needed Harry to sustain themselves to get to Hagrid. That's what happened. I want to do two things. Firstly, I want to apologize to all of our listeners who I'm assuming now are extremely hungry. (laughs) And second, do you guys want to get some food after this? (laughs) Because I am also now extremely hungry. I am full in for tomahawk steaks. Hell yeah. But for now, we still have to talk about Hagrid, who's in the dumps. He wraps up how, you know, this whole thing ties together because he does not want to break the law again because he was thinking about just letting Bucky go or not Bucky. He was thinking about letting Beaky go. The Winter Soldier has not made an appearance. We can call him Bucky. His name's Buckbeak. I know, but I said the wrong Winter Soldier. I said the wrong B nickname. And uh, like he's just, like, you can't make a hippogriff fly away. You can't explain that to him. And he's terrified of breaking the law because he does not want to go to Azkaban. I yet. think if he you throw rocks know. at it and you go, you go, I don't love you no more. <laughs> Get out That's of here. so sad. But then again, uh, I almost said Bucky too. <laughs> Beaky does not understand that he's on the run and can't be found. So yeah. even if he gets him yeah, out of he's, here, he's just going to be seen somewhere. And then, well, yeah. then it's game over. Or he's going to come back. Or, yeah, or he'll come right back. Um, yeah. In the meantime, the trio head back up to the castle, and they spend some time doing some research for Buckbeak's case coming up. Yeah, they're going to check some some legal standings and precedents and see mm-hmm. what could possibly be done if we're going to go about this thing the legal way. Added note here, if they are doing all of this shit for Buckbeak, instead of having Harry, and I know he's not in a great frame of mind right now, but if they were going to say, figure out a way to go after Sirius Black and they're like jumping into legal books here? Why not do that for Harry's situation? (laughs) What can we legally do to expedite maybe the search for Black or something like that since we're being white knights here? It is, it is an interesting or, it is an interesting uh, same side of the coin scenario we yeah. have here. Researching homebrewed booby traps. Yeah. <laughs> Weapons that we can use in self defense around I the know castle. Transfiguration is coming up, but I think I'm gonna take just basic engineering. How do we fortify <laughs> this is a ca- hey guys? This is a castle. How do we fortify this fucking castle? The other thing is Home Alone is a movie right now. They could go watch oh. Home Alone to get ideas in the hair because Home Alone came out in 1990 and it is currently 1990. You guys, I'm seeing three. it right now. Home Alone, <laughs> Lost in Hogwarts. Yes. You might absolutely be right. I would love to see it. And the teachers are kind of useless. No, this is a time. call to action. Yeah. This needs to happen, damn it. <laughs> well, the nice part is it's also Christmas time. So it does tie up. Hell that yeah. This, I think, would be a good idea. Mm. And on Christmas morning, we get a little bit extra of a gift. Harry receives a motherfucking firebolt from someone. Then he looks out the window and he sees the old man from down the road. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys a wink and a wave. <laughs> just to the count of 10 to get mm-hmm. the fuck out of my way so I can ride this thing. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> ten. No, but seriously. They're in the dorm, okay? They're not in a giant space. There's five beds, so, like, it's a little bit big, but probably the beds take up a lot of room. 
I'm getting on that fireball yeah, right oh, away. E I'm kicking off. Mm-hmm. I'm jumping up into the air two feet. Oh, yeah. Like, I, that is the first thing you do. No, instead, these dense motherfuckers <laughs> have their... It's not a bad thought process. It just shouldn't be thought number one. But they <sighs> yeah. try to figure out... Harry and Ron, by the way, are trying to figure out who gave them this gift. They run through Dumbledore, but that would be too much favoritism. I think... The reason that this happens is Ron cannot imagine anybody gifting him th- something that costs this much. No, money. this That's is a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. So, that is price on request, which means you can't afford yeah, it. Yeah, so Ron is probably just like, D- dude, like this is a cool thing, but who the fuck spent this money? And who I, are you? What are you doing? <laughs> I think this is meant to draw a line between what McG did for Harry with that broom. This is something different. Yeah, with his original Nimbus. Yeah, with the yeah. Nimbus, it was just like, it was a nice gesture. A gift worth this much money mm-hmm. is not just a friendly gesture. Somebody either wants something from you or wants you to do something for them because oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is not just a casual, yeah, here. They have didn't this. just replace this... your eight year old Nissan with a new eight year old <laughs> Nissan. They bought you a brand new 2023 fucking whatever right, car. Exactly. Luckily, Ron and Harry are 13. And they, they don't go that far. <laughs> yeah. They think that Lupin might have sent it to him. The man who, yeah, doesn't have a piece of clothing that doesn't have a patch on it. Right. You know, and they're just like, but Ron, that's what teachers do, according to Harry. Yeah, they just yeah. give you brooms. Yeah, so like, oh, I need one. Here it is. It's the same thing that yeah. happened last time. I've Why needed, not? I've needed one broom, and I was given one broom by a teacher. So now I needed a two broom. I was given a two broom by there the teacher. Oh, yeah. Well, but yeah, I mean, after you don't find, like, you talk about it for a second, but then you're like, okay, I don't give a fuck. Let's mm-hmm. go outside. We're oh, going yeah, on yeah. this right We're, now. Yeah, yeah, they're absolutely just taking too much time talking about it. But an interesting little point is brought up here is that Ron tells Harry that Lupin was out when his Nimbus got smashed. Harry thought Lupin was ill, but Ron was doing detention in the hospital wing, and Lupin never showed up. Yeah. So it's just a little interesting tidbit there. But we are interrupted, because Hermione and Crookshanks come into the boys' dormitory. Hermione, you're an asshole. Yeah. Don't bring your cat. To where the rat lives. Yeah, we talked about this before. She is painfully unaware at the situation she's causing. Mm -hmm. Scabbers does not look good. We already know this. We've very recently seen a rat that's not in good condition. Absolutely fuck you for bringing your cat around. (laughs) Like, seriously, dude, what are you doing? I don't care if your cat is on your side 24 hours a day. Then you're not coming in here. And me as your best friend. Don't bring your cat in here. Yeah. Also, what is the point? Yeah. I I mean, there's certain cats who love to be held and love to be pet, right? Most cats, though, you're picking them up by your choice. You're holding them by your choice. And they're not going to stay on your lap for very long. You might be able to pet them for a couple minutes, but they're going to go away. So you're going in there to go see your friends. Why are you bringing your cat? Who you know is going to antagonize the situation that is not even going to, you're not even going to be able to hang out with it for very long. Just right. leave it. And that's the thing. It immediately happens. Crookshanks attacks. In, in, the, in the chaos that ensues, this uh, Harry's sneakoscope actually is what causes everything to stop. Because Crookshanks responds to the sneakoscope hissing and whirling. And that's when we see Scabbers. And yeah, he is, he is not looking good. And Harry even mentions that, like, he remembers Scabbers is probably at the end of his life unless he's Looking got some like secret time. power. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hermione takes Crookshanks out of the dorm, and there's a little bit of a tension in the air as the day continues, but we get to Christmas dinner time. My second favorite meal of the year. <laughs> Just shy behind Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> the, all of the tables are gone. There is one table in the middle, and it is set. For exactly the right amount of people, there's room for 12, and there is 12 people at the table. Uh, We are interrupted by a surprise visitor, though, because Trelawney makes her way down from her divination perch because she foresaw it happening. Convenient to make that a correct prediction. Okay, so this whole fucking thing sits very weird with me. You got Trelawney. 
she has a, a vision, mm-hmm. right, of of her joining them for dinner. Mm-hmm. So she comes down there into a room that you just said had how many chairs? Twelve. And with the addition of Trelawney would be... Thirteen. Exactly. Uh-huh. They weren't planning on her being there. Yeah. One, right away, vision's wrong. Dumbledore Two, has to draw her a chair. Yeah. Table's not set. And then you get there, having known that the people that were going to be there were going to be there in the number they were going to be. Yeah. And then decline to sit down because now you're the 13th person, which you would have known before you got there. You would think. <laughs> you would think. What the fuck are you doing, Trelawney? You you sound similar to McGonagall, because McGonagall <laughs> has a lot of the same thoughts. I mean, I love Trelawney. I think she's great. I think she's chaos energy, and she's wonderful. But I am built like McGonagall. <laughs> I think it's an interesting little, like, thing that she says. She's like, oh, somebody will die. The first to rise will die. But also, why is there only 12 people at Christmas dinner? At like Christmas dinner, yeah. <laughs> Harry and Hermione and Ron stayed for Christmas. We know that. Is that the only students who stayed over Christmas? There was three other students at dinner. There was uh, two first years and a fifth year Slytherin, I believe. Okay, yeah. So these are just all the people in the castle. That yeah. is insane to me. Everybody's gone for Christmas. Everybody's well, got plans for Christmas. It's it's everyone that would be there to celebrate. Because like they knew Trelawney was in the castle but they didn't think she was going to come down oh okay so there like, could be more people who just aren't celebrating christmas yeah this I, is also a school that had a uh, serial killer break into it so a lot more students might have gone home for the christmas yeah. holidays that don't normally go home that's for the christmas that's a good point that's true i we're all getting the fuck out of here thinking, even if you don't celebrate you gotta eat I yeah would, so i would be yeah there i yeah that's like i tr- like what how does trelawney get food if she doesn't come down for the planned meal times, I guess she just goes. Uh, I mean, maybe she's got a That's situation like that. That's why she's so thin and wispy she's looking. Got she just don't eat. <laughs> she t- uh, dash. Elf dash. <laughs> she's got elf dash. That Owler Lupin eats. Wait, what? What'd you say? <laughs> I was going for Uber, and I was like, Owler eats. There you go. Hey, I was too late. I'm sorry. We can workshop it. It's it's fine. <laughs> we do find out though that Lupin is ill again, and this man gets ill a lot. Two hours later, after a full feast is had, Harry and Ron head back to the common room, but Hermione hangs back because she wants to talk to the aforementioned Mick G. No, yeah. don't do it. This Now, Ron makes a mention about how Hermione's tr- probably trying to sneak another class into her schedule somehow. So again, 13-year-olds. Yeah. They're not thinking, right? It it does say that Hermione's homework was spread across three oh, yeah. tables, yeah. Yeah. which is a fucking lot. Yeah, she's lucky everyone's gone, because she would not be able to do that if there was a full common room. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't mention that she was all, like, weirded <laughs> out about the firebolt in the first place. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Because Hermione's always got to have a problem with, with weird things. There's That's always a- shit going on. I, it just occurred to me, she has super desk. <laughs> From the office. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, but yeah, uh, also, Jade, you're not wrong because we did. In the chaos from Crookshanks, we forgot to mention that Hermione was very skeptical and even yells at Ron and Hermione about like, hey, you two motherfuckers, do not get on that broom because it's it's a little bit weird that no one claimed this gift. Okay, that's that's a weird thing. We don't know where it came from. Mm-hmm. You actively have a dude trying to kill you on top of Malfoy not liking you. And I, I mean, the thought I had was Malfoy's dad is really fucking rich. He could probably afford a fuck you like this. Like, yeah, we're going to buy Harry the super expensive broom, you know, or and a then jinxed it's broken or a jinx counterfeit jinx. Right. Just, you know, something like that. And that's yeah. where this whole she wants to talk to McGee and figure out, hey, we don't know where this came from. It could be dangerous. And she, I don't know, man. It's like, yeah, that's a good thought to have, but you just, your friend got his new nice thing and you got it taken away. Yeah. Well, you're not wrong. Or she's not wrong to be like concerned. She's not wrong to be concerned. They but got also, it in the morning, right? We're at Christmas dinner. You're telling me that these two young men on Christmas day, when they didn't have anything else planned. Didn't take that goddamn broom. Even if Hermione said don't ride <laughs> yeah. it, and they didn't go mm-hmm. fuck you, Hermione, and go right downstairs and get on that broom 
So that's it, like it's their fault. They didn't write it right away. They should have been on it hours ago. I will give a point of information. I misspoke. They clarify that this is roughly lunchtime, but I think it's one of those like probably like a 2 p.m. lunch where it's kind of lunch and dinner. And this is also two hours after it started. We're into like probably five, six o'clock at night. So it has been a full day, but it's not like 9 p.m. That's my I said the wrong word earlier, but it has been a very long time. For somehow they should have been on it. Two thirteen-year-old yeah. boys do not attempt to get it's on like a broomstick. It's like you give a motorcycle to two thirteen-year-old boys. I was just exactly. Say, that you don't think that they're going to find ten minutes to yeah. run outside and, and go not, pop on it? Not just any I motorcycle. I bought my yeah. first motorcycle yeah. in February, right? And it was the most painful thing to have to trailer it home because there was three feet of snow on the ground. That one week later, once the snow had like cleared from the street didn't matter there's a video of me riding yeah. it with snow everywhere and i was the happiest i have ever been if it's a broom yeah you're gonna be on it in your pajamas well in the, yeah exactly yeah 100 percent. now <laughs> the reason they should have got on it now is because now, now they can't mcg does in fact come into the common room with hermione who scurries off and hides behind a book and she g police confiscates the firebolt. We've been saying it this whole time. Not wrong. You're an asshole. <laughs> I'd be mad at Hermione for this. You would be, but also, you should have went out there and got on that fucking broom so you can look at McGee and be like, I wrote it, and I was fine. <laughs> yeah, I am not one to victim blame. However, right. <laughs> yeah, Harry, you made choices, my dude. Yeah, <laughs> You made choices. You had time to try it and you didn't. Now it's taken away. It's a bummer. But Look, Harry, he's also sassy. So you'd be like, McGee's like, we're going to use, we're going to take it. We're going to test it. We're going to see if there's anything wrong with it. We're and we're going to give it back to you. Strip it down. That's terrifying. Mm. But I'm hoping she means magically. Don't <laughs> take the shit that you can't get the seal. The registered number is in there on gold plate. And if you take it off, anyways. Nate, stripping down a magical broom is like doing that because you're terrible. magically stripping it down that is exactly what's gonna happen to this bro you're telling me that, that but, Dumbledore can't just wave a wand over it and be like oh exactly no fucking spells no hex that's what I was gonna say it's gonna take three weeks fuck you I have a better way we can test it right now <laughs> give me that broom I'm going outside yeah McGee you're a super powerful witch I'm gonna get on the broom you be at the ready that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I'm willing to sign the Cast end- a spell the- <laughs> on the ground so I don't fucking break my neck. If I'll I sign fall. the waiver. I'll put, sign the waiver. Put Madam Hooch, who yeah. is our fucking flight instructor, mm-hmm. on it, and then you and Dumbledore and Flitwick stand around. And mm-hmm. if something happens, you go, "Ooh, counter spell." Well, we we get part of the way there God because it. it is mentioned that both Flitwick and uh, Madam Hooch are going to be the ones going over it. So I do think these are trusted. The experts broom are going to handle it. No, yeah. yeah, where's it Madam Hooch? Should be fine. Madam Hooch is should be on Here point right now. there because yeah. Yeah. like yeah. she knows about brooms. If anybody knows what you should and shouldn't be taking off a fucking broom, mm-hmm. she should be asking the fucking fucking broom lady. The only reason that this is a a thing that we have stopped on and like oh it could be hexed or cursed is because they think it could have come from fucking Sirius. All hands should be on deck right now if they think. The fat lady was attacked. Somebody was there that weren't supposed to be. They can't find him now. Now Harry's getting mysterious gifts. I mean, they have him not going into town, and they have dementors around the school because of this. Dumbledore should be here now. You know what I mean? This is a huge deal. It might be Mr. Weasley just bought it. He dropped it there, and he was going to bring a card, forgot, whatever, right? It could be nothing but it's probably not nothing. Maybe they had a few more galleons laying around yeah. after the, the Egypt trip than I thought. They won another prize. Hindsight's twenty twenty. I get that. But if McGonagall would have been the one to tell Harry, hey, Hermione said you got an unmarked broomstick for Christmas, and I immediately said, I'm going to come up and take that broom because I think Sirius Black sent it to you. Harry is not going to freak out as much. Hermione is not going to take the blame. She won't be the bad guy. What happens is McGonagall takes it, says she thinks it's jinxed, gives no reason why. A common theme in (laughs) this chapter. Yeah. Why is no one asking why? So instead, it's up to Hermione to say that she and McGee think 
that Sirius Black sent this broom. So now Hermione is fully teeing herself up to take blame. If I'm Hermione, I'm still going to consider myself a good friend, but I am lying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I am telling them you want to cover said, your involvement with the confiscation. Yeah, well, Harry, I mentioned to McGonagall that you got sent an unmarked broomstick. She full thought, stop. She yes, thought exactly that Sirius Black said. I didn't say that. That wasn't me. I didn't I, take that this wasn't off. Me. I was talking to her about my classes. I mentioned, hey, you know what? It was really cool of you to get Harry a new broom like yeah. you did the last time. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? And you know what? Actually, Dumbledore's the one who brought up black. 100%. Not me. Yeah. Not me. There you go. I just, I just, I accidentally, hey, I accidentally but, but said you got a broom. Just That's afford to get herself out of being the friend who is technically right, which as we all know is the best kind of right. <laughs> yes. But also an asshole. But also these gifts, right? We know stuff comes through by owl. These gifts appear at the end of their beds. Mm -hmm. Did the broom come in via owl? Is there a way of tracing where the broom came from? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Santa probably, Santa's magic. He's not a muggle. That's got to be what they're going to do to figure out if there's anything going on with did, the broom. I assume they're going to do some sort of magical did Sirius uh, drop it forensics there? on it. Because these are quite, like, did Sirius come in and drop this gift here? Like, let's figure out how it got here before we start tearing it down. Apparently he's in the school already. If he, if. The paintings are right, and he slashed, and he was the one that slashed the painting of the fat lady. Then he's at the school why and is, could have just dropped the broom. Why is there no security on our packages coming through the fucking building? That's true. If we're just like serious, could send a fucking bomb in here. I don't know why you guys are making such a big deal out of this. It's from Santa. <laughs> It's it's Chris. Oh fuck! It's Christmas. You know what? I forgot. Well, look, it was obviously Santa. I'm not saying you guys are wrong. I'm just saying that's what I think. That's what Harry should have. <sighs> well, that's you know, Santa. everybody might think something a little bit different. I am curious to know what our listeners think, and if you would like to let us know what you thought of this chapter or this episode. I want you to send an owl to podcastattgmail.com and tell us just that. You can also follow us on all of our social meds. And if you really enjoyed this episode, you can go to patreon.com slash podcastattg and make a pledge of any amount. We got a ton of stuff there for you to listen to. Uh, uh, side quests, extra episodes, watch alongs and games. It's fucking great. Um, thank you all very, very much for listening, and we'll see you real soon. Ha! Bye! Uh, happy belated Christmas? It's, I know it's a little late, but, you know, it's better late than never is what I was always taught. <laughs>